Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Amen. Everybody feeling good this morning? Yes. Well, praise the Lord. Welcome to another beautiful day at Christ Church. Father, we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Father, as we lift up your name, as we proclaim your word today, let your Holy Spirit fill us continuously and overflow in our lives. Father, we welcome you today at Christ Church. Be exalted, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Have your way. And please give me the utterance, O oh God, that I may give your word to your people, your children, your followers, those who are seeking after you. In Jesus' name, amen. So did y'all enjoy that, that uh, last series that we did? Amen. What was, the, what was the series called, anybody? Amen. That's right. That's good. That's good. Praise the Lord. Well, today we're doing a different series, okay? Today starts a new series, okay? Who loves the Lord? Everybody, y'all love the Lord? Who fears the Lord? You love the Lord? Okay, wonderful. I love the Lord, but I also fear him. What do you mean you fear him? What do you mean you fear him? It's not like, oh, I'm scared of God. Oh, I'm scared. Not that kind of fear. It's a reverential type of fear. He's awesome. He's worthy to be feared. The Bible says that the day of the Lord is great and it's terrible. It's going to be great for those who love him. But for those who don't love him, those who don't know him, it's going to be a terrible, terrible, it's going to be a bad day. It's going to be a really, really bad day. <laughs> so if you will, turn in your Bibles or your mobile devices to Psalm 89. Psalm Division 89. All right? And somebody said, praise the Lord when you get to Psalm 89. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Psalm 89. Look at verse number six. For who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who in the heaven? That means there's some people, there's some, some, some something in the heavens, right? There are angels, there are principalities, there are dominions, there are, um, there's all. Uh, Rulers, powers, it's a lot up, up in the heavens. And there's some things up in the heaven we don't even know about. Okay? But who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Let me ask you another question. This coming from, this not in the script. Who anywhere can be compared to the Lord? Not the devil. Some people say, oh, the devil is God, is, um, is equal with God, and they own it. No, 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 nowhere compared. Lucifer was a created being. He was an angel, okay? An archangel, and, and he was a created being. He did not create himself. He did not create the universe. He did not create anything. He is created. Who is, who is more powerful, the creator or the created? The creator. But who in the heaven can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be likened unto the Lord? What mighty person on the earth? Who can be compared to the Lord? Who? No one, right? Absolutely no one. God is greatly to be what? God is, anybody else see that? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints. That'd be us. And to be had in what? Reverence to be had in reverence of all them that are round about him. To be in reverence is to have a, a respect of a, 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 a adoration. It's a level of respect, a, re, a level of fear. Okay? Uh, it's an awe, to be in awe. And everyone around about him. I remember growing up um, back in the day, we couldn't sit in our dad's chair. You know, like in the diner in our family room, Dan had a chair, I had a chair. We all had our own location in the in living room. And to sit in his chair, you couldn't just do that. You know, now church, they, they, they can do whatever they want to do. They can sit, plop, plop, do whatever you want. You cannot do that. When you have a reverential fear, you have an all, you just, certain things you just don't do. You cannot do things like that, okay? And, and one day, we're in the family room, and me and my brother Brandon was in the family room, and Brandon, he actually sat in Dad's chair, right? It was a leather chair, kind of like this right here. 
I said, boy, you're going to get in trouble. You had to get out of daddy's chair. Oh, man, I'm having a good time in the chair. He had a pencil in his hand, right? He had a pencil in his hand, and he actually made a mistake and stamped a hole in it, in the leather chair. He put a hole in the leather chair. Needless to say, needless to say, he got a spanking. He never did that again, right? And the next time we saw it, the hole was gone. He patched it up some kind of way. I have no idea how he did it, but he could, you could not even see the hole. I don't know what he did. But my whole point is to have a reverence. We reverence our fathers, but God deserves so much, much more. Somebody say amen. amen. Look at, uh, turn to Psalm 25. You have to, I'm just going to go through them. If, you, if you're writing, you can take notes, you can. But Psalm 25, 14. 25, 14 said, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. The secret to your success, the secret to your uh, uh, sanctification, your anointing, the gift that God gives you. Listen to what it says. The secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. You want that kind of power in your life? You want that kind of power to exude your power? You want that, 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 that um, dunamis power? You want that kind of power? You get that when you fear the Lord. When you fear him and just know, it's not, like I said, it's not just to be afraid of God. He does not want us to be afraid of him. He does not. But he's worthy of you, like me. Somebody said, are you afraid of lightning? No, I'm not afraid of lightning. I love lightning, but I had a real good respect for lightning. <laughs> I respect it. Trust me. You won't see me flying on kite in a thunderstorm. You won't see me out there, you know, playing around. Nope, not me. I don't fear. I'm not afraid of lightning, but I respect it. I'm not afraid of heights, but I respect it. <laughs> I'm not afraid of guns, but I respect them. Amen. So the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him. And that's what he says next. And he will show you his covenant. God said, I'm going to show you my covenant. When you fear me, you honor me, and you show me reverence, I'm going to show, he said, I'm going to manifest my covenant. And he does it so much. Okay? You want to see his covenant. You, that, you want to see God's goodness in your life. Amen. Psalm 33, verse 8. Psalm 33, verse 8. He said, let all the earth do what? Fear the Lord. The whole earth, but the whole earth does not fear God. The whole earth does not do it. He said, let the whole earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. The world refuses to do this. That's why we have so much decadence, so much violence, so much murder, so much sin is in the world. The world is antithetical to this. They're diametrically opposed. The world does not do what the world is supposed to do. The world can't do it because they are the world. Number 33, 8. Psalm 33, 18. Just jump down 10 verses. He said, Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him. Whoa. The eye of the Lord is upon everyone that fears him. I fear the Lord. So you know what? That means I know that the Lord is watching me. <laughs> Amen. I'm laughing because my grandbaby was right here in the front row. And he was laughing at me. It always makes me smile when I look over there. But it, 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 it does something to me to know that God sees. Even when you can't perceive his presence, you cannot perceive it. You don't feel it. It's not about feelings. It's about your faith. It's about faith. Amen. Amen. He is there. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy. Who hopes in his mercy? Anyone else hope for his mercy? I, I hope for his mercy. I want his mercy from him. I want God to give me favor with man. I want to have favor with God and with man. Amen. Amen. The baby said amen. Praise the Lord. Psalm 34, one chapter over. And I love this. Now, this is what you want when you're traveling, when you're working, when you're alone, when you, wherever you are in the city, in the field. This is what we pray. 
every day. Psalm 34, 7, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivered them. You have an angel, the angel of the Lord, the angel of the Lord. We say, Lord, encamp us with your angels. Encamp us. If you don't fear God, you don't love him, you might as well forget that prayer. It bounced off the walls. You, you don't have access to God. If you don't love him, you don't honor him, you don't fear him, you don't reverence him, you might as well forget that prayer. <laughs> Amen. It says the angel of the Lord encamped around, encamp. They, say, they, they camp out with us. They hanging out where you can't see them. But the angel of the Lord encamped around about them that fear him. Somebody say, Amen. 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 I love that assurance. That's an assurance that I know whatever situation that I'm in, that the angel of the Lord encamped me. Amen. I love that. I love that. Yes. Psalm 34, 9. There's two verses down. It says, Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. Did anyone know what that means? Let me, let me say it again. Listen. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no lack. No lack. He said, God's going to give you everything that you need. Amen. Everything. And not only will he give you everything that you need, he said he would give you your heart desires. Amen. So not only God going to give you what you need, but God also gives you some things that you want. <laughs> Man, he's a good God. He's a good God. I love that. The fear of the Lord. Okay. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. Psalm 34, 9. For there is no lack. There will be no lack. You fear him. Fear him, young people. Amen. If you will, look at Psalm 36. Psalm 36. Psalm 36. Somebody say amen when you get there. Amen. amen. This is how you live when you don't have the fear of the Lord. This is how people live. Psalm 36, verse 1. The transgressions of the wicked saith within my heart, there's no fear of God before his eyes. There's no fear of God. The wicked people, the people that who are out doing wickedness, living uh, uh, wretched lives, there, there's, no, there's no fear of God. They can't fear God. They don't know him. They can't fear him. They don't know him. For he flatters himself in his own eyes. He make it, they make, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> they flatter themselves, make them own self feel good. They pump up themselves. They motivate themselves to feel good about their own wickedness. They're proud of their wickedness. He flattered himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. His sinful ways catch up with him and then found to be hateful. Wicked people are full of hatred. Somebody say amen. amen. Number three, the words of his mouth are iniquity. Everything come out of the mouth now but sin, gossip, hate, wrath, Condemnation, everything negative. It condescension, uh, con when, you, when they condescend people, try to put other people down. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. It's trickery when they talk. It's bribery. It's all kind of deceit when they talk. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He has left off to be wise and to do good. They can't. They can't do good. They, 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 they left off to be wise. They can't because it's not in their hearts. Number four, he devises uh, mischief even upon his bed. Even when they sleep and they think about evil things to do. Who can I get next? Who can I get tomorrow? Who can I hurt? Who can I take from? Who can I rob? What can I do? Though even he devises mischief upon his bed. He said to himself in a way that is not what? Not good. Are y'all following along with me, young people? Okay, Psalm 36, verse number four. He devises mischief upon his bed. He said to himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. What does that mean? They don't hate evil. You have to hate evil. Do anyone here hate evil? I hate evil. I hate voodoo, witchcraft. I hate, I hate uh, manipulation. I hate lying, deceit, trickery. 
I hate all sorts of evil. I even, like I said before, I even hate my own sin. I hate sin. I hate wickedness. I hate it. So I have to love righteousness. If you love righteousness, if you love the Lord Jesus Christ, if you love sanctification, holiness, you're going to hate evil. We are supposed to abhor, abhor evil. Supposed to hate it. Supposed to hate. Why? God hates it. I made a post on social media, it was a big long feed, and I said, God does not hate the sinner. He hates the sin. God does not hate the sinner. He hates the sin that we do. He does not hate the individual. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus died. The Bible said that God so loved the world, he sent his son to die for us, for sinners. So God does not hate the sinners. God hates sin. So they love evil. Why? Because they do not fear the Lord. We're talking about the fear of the Lord, the love of God, and the fear. I love the Lord, but I also fear him. I think, and I'm not telling no one else to do this. I think that I fear him more than I love him. I think I fear God more than I love him. The Bible said that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord. It didn't say the love of the Lord first. The fear of the Lord. It's a reverential fear. It's a holy fear. It's a holy fear. That's right. Let's go to the New Testament. If you will, turn to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7 is a part of the Lord Jesus Christ's sermon on the what? Anybody? Amen. A sermon on the mount. Five chapters. Matthew 5, 6, and 7 are the longest recorded teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you ever want to read it, please read it. It's wonderful. Matthew 5, 6, and 7. The longest recorded teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, Matthew chapter 7. Look at verse number 21. This right here makes me have a... It, 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 how can I say? It increases my fear of God. Number 21, he says, Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone... They say unto me, Lord, Lord. Not everyone that say, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Everyone, not, everyone is not going to make it. Everyone is not going to make it. He said, everyone that says, Lord, Lord, will not enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Amen. Number 22. He said, many shall say, to me in that day. And the Lord, his teaching right here on the Sermon on the Mountain, he has a big audience. This is a wonderful teaching, it's longest discourse. He said, Men that were saying to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? It's going to be some people say, Lord, I did this, I did that, I prophesied, I healed people, I cast out devils, Lord, I was down feeding the people, I was up under the bridge, I was doing this, I was doing that, I did all these things. He said, many will say unto him, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils. Did we cast out devils? We did all this in your name? He said, in thy name we done many wonderful works. And number 23, which right here makes me shake every time I read it. Just, he said, and I will profess unto them. With a broken heart, Jesus saying this. He said, I will profess unto them. I never knew you. I never knew you. He said, depart from me. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Because you, you don't fear God, you don't love him, you don't obey him. Okay, they don't love him, they did not obey him. They didn't have any fear of God. They're just doing something, they're being religious. And we're not here to be religious, folks. Family, we are not here to be religious. Somebody say amen. Y'all not coming to church just to hear some some teaching. This is for you to obey, to uh, apply this to your life. To apply the word of God to your lives, people. Amen? Amen. You, when you stand before God, you won't be able to say, I never heard the gospel. You're not going to be able to say that. You're not going to say, well, Lord Jesus, no one ever gave me the truth. No one ever gave me the true gospel. You won't have that excuse. You will not have that excuse. And if you watch it online, you will not have that excuse when you stand before God. Matthew chapter 10. I love the Lord, but I also fear him. I love him. The Lord knows I love him. Matthew 
Matthew chapter 10. People never fear wicked people. Never fear wickedness. Never even fear the devil. I have no fear of the devil. People say, oh, the devil, the devil, the man, forget him. You want to know who I fear? I fear God. That's who I fear. I don't have no fear. God has given us power to trample over Satan. Luke 10, 19, I'll tell you that. God has given us that power through Christ. He's given us the whole armor of God. Okay, he's given us that, Ephesians chapter 6. He's given us that. He's given us armor, and he's given us weapons. Okay? But, and he's given us his word. He's given us his blood. Amen? That blood saves us. That blood cleanses us and washes us. Never fear wickedness. Somebody said, never fear wickedness. Never fear wicked people. Fear God. Fear God. Fear God. Number Matthew chapter 10. He said, Jesus telling his disciples right here, he said, what I tell you in darkness, when we're together, what I'm telling you right now, he said, speak it in the light. And what you hear in the ear, he said, preach upon the housetop. Jesus telling them, I'm telling you this, right? I'm giving this message. Go out and say what I'm saying. This is what he says, and he said, and fear not them which kill the body. I'm always thinking about that. What, what if something ever happened to me out in the street? Whatever something happened, I won't, I, but because this is here, I won't have any fear. I'm already practicing in my mind, preparing myself, because I know what Jesus has already told me. I know what he's already said in his word. You believe the word of God? Yes. Do you accept the word of God? But yes. take him at his word. He said, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. No man can kill the soul. Somebody can kill this body, but they can't touch my soul. Amen. No one can touch the soul. He said, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him, which is able also to destroy both in the soul and the body in hell. That's why I say, I fear God. <laughs> I fear him. Okay? Don't worry about man. Don't fear man. No man. Don't fear no man. Fear God. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. He said, fear not him which they can kill the body, but they're not able to kill the soul. But rather, fear him which is able to destroy both. Oh, my goodness. I don't know what, how that makes you feel, but that keeps me from doing a lot. That keeps me from doing a whole lot. If you will, turn to John chapter 14. And John chapter 14 is a part of what they call uh, the Lord Jesus' farewell discourse. That's a part of his farewell discourse. He was on his way to the cross. And he was preparing his disciples and his, uh, to be apostles. He was preparing them. But there's a litmus test in the Bible. You all hear people say, oh, I love the Lord. They'll say, I love the Lord, but you know what? And, and you give them about five minutes later, they'll still curse you out. <laughs> I got some co-workers at work, man. They talking about how say they are. They in the break room cursing like, I can't say cursing like sailors. I said that one time, they cursing like a sailor. But one of my co-workers, he said, man, I, I'm a sailor. I said, I can't use that term. I can't do that. He, not, he doesn't curse like that. So you can't say, oh, he cursing like a sailor. But you know what I mean, okay? But, but. They say they love the Lord, but they are still, you can't see it. There's no fruit in their life, no evidence. They just say, I love the Lord. And so many people, oh, I love the Lord. They'll punch you in your mouth. They'll steal from you. They'll curse you out, go behind your back. They'll do different things. But they say they love the Lord. There's a litmus test. I want you guys to always remember this. John chapter 14. It's a litmus test in there for someone to say, they say, oh, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. That's what they say. But it's a litmus test in the Bible. John 14. Look what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you love me. Somebody say if. If, if is a very, very small word. How many letters is it? Two. Only two. But it's a very big word. Because if is contingent upon what you do. If Jesus said, if you do, you do this. If you don't, you won't. He said, if you love me, what did he say? Anybody? Amen. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, do what I say. <laughs> do what I say. Don't just say you love me. 
Anyone can do that. He said, and Jesus said, then I will pray the Father. If you love me now, Jesus said, I'm going to be your advocate. I'm going to pray for you. He said, I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter. Talking about the Holy Spirit, that he may abide with you for how long? Forever. Then the Lord says in verse number 17, even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, the world cannot, the world will not, the world does not have the um, uh, 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 capacity, the ability to receive it. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Notice he said, he called, it's a him, it's not an it. People say, oh, it, 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 it'll do this, it'll do that. It's not an it. The Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. Somebody say the Holy Spirit is a person. It's not an it. It's not a force. It's not Star Wars. May the force be with you. It's not that kind of thing. It's a real life. It's a personality. And it's an expression of God. The Greek word is the pneuma. It's the wind. It's the power of God. It's not an it. Number 17 again. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Man, no other religion, no other uh, ideology teaches that your God gonna come and live in you. None. They're gonna, he, they're gonna come and live in us. He's gonna have his abide, a, a boat within you to give you that power. He comes and live inside of us. And we express him through the spirit. We express God through the spirit. Okay? Listen to what Jesus said. He said, I will not leave you comfortless. He said, I will come to you. Number 19, yet a little while, and the world sees me no more, but you shall see me. He said, because I live, you shall live also. Number 20, and at that day, you shall know that I am in my Father. At that day. He, you're going to know that I'm in my Father, you in me, and I in you. Man, don't you know how powerful that is? Do y'all understand that, young people? Y'all getting that? Listen, number 21. I love this. I wish somebody give me a, somebody give me a drum roll. Come on, anybody, give me a drum roll. Thank you so much. Listen to what he says. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them. Somebody say, he that hath my commandments. And keep it them. That's the thing. Not just have the commandments, but you got to keep it. You got to keep his word in your heart, young people. You got to keep his word in your heart. Amen. He that had my commandment and keep it them. He it is that loving me. Not because you say, well, I love the Lord. I do this. Not because you speaking in tongues. You doing all this. You going to church all the time. People say, I haven't gotten uh, uh, something on, on social media. If you love Jesus, send this to 20 people. Anybody ever seen that kind of nonsense? Yeah. Don't get caught up in that nonsense. If you want to be blessed, you got to send this to 50 people and you're going to get blessed and show that you love Jesus. That's nonsense. That's, that's manipulation. It's witchcraft. It's manipulation to get you to do their will. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's the, that's the litmus test. Not because you can send a text to 100 people. That's not, that's not no proof that you love Jesus. He said, he that have my commandment and keepeth them. He it is that love me. And he that loveth me. Somebody give me another drum roll. Come on, give me a drum roll. <laughs> Wonderful. Listen to what Jesus said, people. Family, listen to what he said. He said, he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. Man, that is so powerful. That give me power. It give me a power that I cannot explain to you. It's nothing so special about Pastor Andrews, but that give me a power that I cannot, I cannot express. If you want that kind of power in your life, you want that love, you want God to walk with you, to live in you. He said, he that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And he said, and Jesus said, and I will love him. 
He said, I'm going to love you. My father going to love you. And then he says right here, he said, I will manifest myself. I will manifest myself unto him. Did y'all get that? Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. He said, I'm going to manifest myself to you. I'm not saying he's going to, you know, pop up while you're in the car. Or he's going to show up inside your bed. He's not talking about like that. He's going to manifest in your life. Amen. People are going to see the goodness of God in your life. They're going to see Christ. They're going to see the love of God and your anointing. They're going to see your anointing. Not only about will they see it, you will see it. Amen. You lay your hands on people, they'll get healed. Amen. Maybe not all of them. I have prayed for people and they were healed. I have prayed for some people who didn't get healed. But I have seen more get healed than more did not get healed. So, you know, but uh, he said, I will manifest myself. Jesus said, I'm going to show up. He said, I will be there for you because you love me. You keep my commandments and I love you. My father will love you. Now, Judas, not the Jews that betrayed him, not, not Judas is carry out. But Judas said unto him, how is it that you're going to manifest thyself to us and not to the world? This is what Jesus said right here. Oh, my goodness. Somebody give me another drum roll. These powerful. This is so powerful right here. Jesus answered and said unto him, what it says? If. Anybody see that? Are y'all looking at your Bible today? He said, if. If. Jesus number 23. And Jesus answered and said unto him, if a man love me, not saying that you are, but he said, if. If you do. Or it can be translated, since you love me, okay? If a man or a woman love me, he'll keep my words. Amen. It won't be, you know, if you love Jesus, you're not going to be doing this and doing that. You can't do it. The moment if I take my eyes off of Jesus Christ, I'll become a fornicator, a daughter, anything else. There's nothing so special about me. King David did it. Abraham did it. So many people in the Bible did it. David did it. Different people, men of God, they did it. Why? Because they took their eyes off of God. Don't take your eyes off of him. Keep your eyes on Christ. Keep your eyes on Christ. Obey his word. Even if you do it just because you want to obey him. Obe obedience is better than sacrifice. Obey God. Fear him. Reverence him. Jesus said, John 14, 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, he said, first, Judas asked, he said, how are you going to manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, if a man loved me, he would keep my words. And my father will love him. Just like he, my father loved me. He said, if you keep my words, my father will love him. And he said, and we, who is Jesus talking about? Jesus said, we, me and my father. He said, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Jesus said, we're going to come and we're going to live in you. You keep my commandments, keep my word, obey what I tell you. He said, me and my father, we're going to come and live in you. you. When you walk, you take the kingdom of God with you everywhere you go. You take power, young people. You take anointing because you love him. You obey him. You fear him. You reverence him. Amen? He said, we'll make our abode. That's an abode where you abide is where you live. That's where you live. Jesus said this right here. This is the litmus test. Okay? This is the identifier. Listen to what he says, number 24. He that loveth me not, keepeth not my sins. Did y'all get that? Yes. He that loveth me not, you don't love me, you don't reverence me, you don't fear me, you don't love me, you don't obey he said, he that loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. He said, and the word which you hear, he said, it's not mine. Jesus said, it's not my word. <laughs> he said, it's not mine. He said, but the Father which has sent me. He said, it's the, it's the Father's word. People, don't worry about people. Please God. When you obey God, when you love him, you serve him, everybody else is a, is a beneficiary of that. Did y'all hear what I said? When you love God, when you obey him, everyone else in your spirit, everyone that you have contact with, everyone else that you have influence on, they'll be a beneficiary. They, we benefit 
Your boss will be, I mean, your, your company, your, your employees, your co-workers, they will all be beneficiaries because you love God. Amen. And you obey him. And you carry the love of God wherever you go. Amen. The power of God goes wherever you go. Yes. And you carry the light with you wherever you go. Amen. 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 Coming to a close. Turn to Hebrews chapter 12, family. Coming to a close. You know what? What I do? I'm going to save. I'm going to save uh, this for part two. I'm going to save this for part two. Y'all receive that word today? Yes. So my whole point is to obey God. Like I said earlier. I love him, but I fear him. You have to have a reverential fear of God enough that make you want to obey him. Y'all understand that, young people? You, have to, you, have to, you should want to be able to obey him, not just so much because you fear him, but because you, say it again. Woo, come on now. Say it again. That's right, because we love him. We love him. But I fear God and I love him. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If, now, if, 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 if you love me. He said, if you don't love me, you're not going to keep my commandments. <laughs> you're not going to keep my word. You want to still have, commit your fornication, your adultery, your lying, and getting high and doing different things. It's because you don't fear him, you don't love him. And I tell you, young people, when you love the Lord Jesus Christ, love him with all your might, you begin to hate the sins that so easily beset us. You begin to dislike it, sin so much. And once you have seen, I have seen the consequences of sin in my life. I have seen the consequences of sin, and I don't like it. I do not like it. We're going to read that next week, man. It's going to be wonderful, Lord willing. Y'all receive that message? Well, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, it may be someone out there watching. Everybody here saved, amen? Yeah. But praise the Lord. It may be someone else that watching online and saying, Pastor Andrews, I'm not saved. I don't know how to be saved, but I want the fear of God. I want the love of him. I want the passion. I want to be able to fear God. Let's pray this prayer with me, but you have to believe it in your heart. It's not just about saying some words, being religious. We're not doing that. This is about faith. It's real faith in action. It's not about being religious. We don't want you to come to Christ Church to be religious. Don't watch us on TV, on the, on the internet, just to be religious. This is something that you have to believe in your heart. Okay? If I can talk you into something, someone else can come and talk you right out of it. But if it's done by faith, the Lord will receive you. Amen? Just pray a prayer like this. Dear Lord, forgive me for my sins. Cleanse me from my sins. Cleanse me. Purify me. Sanctify me. Wash me. Save me, Lord Jesus. Save me. I believe, Lord Jesus, that you came to this earth and you died for my sin and for the sin of the entire world. I believe that you died upon that cross and you were buried in a tomb and you were risen three days later by the glory of God. I believe it. And you rose from the dead physically in a body. You rose from the dead and you sat on the right hand of God. I believe it. I receive you. Save me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me. Cleanse me. He'll do it in Jesus' name. He'll do it. He'll do it. And also, Acts 2.38 says you need to be baptized. Okay? But you have to do this by faith. Somebody said, Pastor Andrew, you really think just because somebody said those words they're going to be saved? That's what the word of God says. If you confess that Jesus died, he rose from the dead, that God raised him from the dead, he died for our sins, the Bible said you will be saved. The Bible said any man that call upon the name of Jesus shall be saved. Amen. I believe it. Yes, I believe it. Amen. Amen. Well, also, that's it. We come to the time of our giving. Okay, and at Christ Church, we urge you to give. We need for these videos to go around the world. If you look around the bottom, you will see the Christchurch.com. We have a donate button there. 
We have a donate button that you can go there to give to the Christ Church. And this is the holiday season. We want to be able to feed some people. We want to be able to feed people. We want to be able to give and, and give more money that, that we normally do to feed these hungry people to, to, during this season. And there are some people who are alone. If you can watch this video, you are not alone. God is with you. He loves you. He hears your prayers. He hears your prayers. Amen. So go to the Christchurch.com and give very gently. And we appreciate that. Amen. 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 So we fear God, not man. We stand in reverence of him. We love him and we fear him. Amen. Amen. But love is the greatest though, right? Amen. The Bible said love is the greatest. Amen. Amen. Y'all stay blessed. Amen. Amen. Amen.